Welcome to the Jersey Score. With all the drama surrounding the ACC with the Magnificent Seven and the conference potentially dissolving, we wondered, is there a chance that the ACC could follow the Big 12's example and potentially add some group of five schools to help stabilize the conference and keep it from breaking up completely? So we made a list of what we think are the top 10 fits in the ACC to potentially help keep the conference from dissolving. So let's take a look. But before we do, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And now let's get to it. The way everyone's been talking about the ACC and where all the schools are going to go when the conference breaks up and who's going to take which teams and so on reminds me a lot of the um, of the conversations that happened about the Big 12 when it was announced that Texas and OU were leaving. And look what happened. They were able to stay together, coalesce, find what they felt like were the four best uh, group of five schools available at them and stabilize the conference. And then they turned it around and went and got more money for the conference. So I wonder if, you know, maybe we're too premature on all this on trying to decide the fate of all these schools. Uh, I, I mean, I really think that these schools would rather stay in the ACC and stay together if they could start closing that uh, financial gap with the Big Ten and the SEC. They have longstanding rivalries and they're aligned pretty well with the conference and it's kind of a pain to move. And honestly, you go to the Big Ten and the, or the SEC and I just don't see many of these schools really having much success there, at least in uh, football. And so I really think it makes more sense to stay in a weaker or at least less deep ACC um, to get to the top of the ACC and then you have uh, a shot at the playoff and um, going pretty far in the postseason versus going to a, another conference that's really deep. Even going to the Big 12, which doesn't have any blue bloods, is a pretty deep conference where uh, it feels like almost every game is winnable by either team. And so, um, again, I, I think the ACC would have some incentive to stay together. So what I'm thinking is if someone does leave, it seems obvious that it's going to be either or it's going to be Florida State and Clemson. So we can assume that those two at least are gone. There may be some others as well. Um, you know the the names at this point, but let's just assume that it's uh, those two are still in there, and let's kind of forget about Notre Dame. I mean, they're not full member anyway, and so they're not really part of this. Football's what drives it. So let's assume that the remaining schools look something like this in the ACC. So who could they go add? Which schools would be a good fit for the ACC? And we're going to limit this just to group of five and just assume that nobody from the other Power Five conferences doesn't really make sense for anybody to jump to the ACC. You could make the argument for uh, Cincy and UCF, who would have been great additions for the ACC if they found themselves in this situation uh, prior to uh, the Big 12's realignment. And then West Virginia, you know, who has wanted to get into the ACC for a long time. But let's say the dynamics are different, the Big 12 stable, and so the ACC is really limited to a group of five, just for the sake of argument here. So at number 10, we have Coastal Carolina. Now, I'm not a big fan of Coastal Carolina for some reason. Chandler is a linebacker. Yep, that's their... Oh, that's what they're mad about. That's mad, yeah. And that's why they're really mad. Can't do that. But for a while, they were the media darling, and they also would give the ACC, uh, they would get them back into South Carolina after Clemson's departure. Uh, but they are pretty new to FBS. I doubt that they're really P5 ready, but it could be a fit in that regard. So at number nine, we have another Sunbelt team with Marshall. And Marshall would be a pretty good fit geographically, gets you into a new state, albeit not a very populous state. And Marshall's athletics aren't known for being super strong. Also, th thanks to uh, Matthew McConaughey, they have a relatively good national brand on some level. I don't think they're still a, a huge draw on TV. But again, that's why they're at number nine. At number eight, we have Boise State. No, I'm just kidding. That is one disadvantage that the ACC has compared to the Big 12 when they were looking to expand is the ACC is more locked in than the eastern part of the country, whereas the Big 12 could, being in the middle, could expand both ways. Now at the real number eight, we have Temple. 
Now, Temple is in the American Athletic Conference, which is arguably the strongest of the group of five conferences, at least prior to uh, losing some of its top programs to the Big 12. The, and uh, Temple is also located in Philadelphia, which is a, a huge, great market to get into. Uh, the problem is Temple is also probably the most forgettable conference in, uh, team in the AAC. A good fit ge- geographically, not super strong um, athletics, pretty good academics. So it could be a fit in that regard, but I don't know if it's going to be enough to um, move the needle financially. And so even though Temple is somewhat forgettable, they are in a really good market. But that is why at number seven, we have Villanova. They are also located in the Philadelphia market, but they have a much stronger brand, at least in terms of basketball. Now they do have a football program, but it is FCS. So it would have to make a big leap straight to power five. And so that would be a big ask for them. So I don't know how realistic realistic it would be for them to uh, make a jump like that. But I think that their brand is a little stronger than Temple's. So, uh, but you can make the argument that Temple should be ahead of them because they're already uh, playing at a closer level to the ACC. At number six, we have Tulane. And Tulane, as we all know, is very good academically, which is why they're often talked about as a potential fit for the Pac 12. Uh, so, the ACC was also very good academically. It would make sense for them to have interest in Tulane and have to kick the tires on it. Now, they are a little bit farther outside of the the typical ACC geographic footprint, but that could actually be an advantage, help uh, grow the territory a little bit more, get into new markets, and um, and even get into SEC territory a little bit could help with recruiting. Um, however, their athletics have not been as great. They did have a very good year, though, in football, so it shows that they do have potential So that might be enough thinking, hey, great uh, academics, the athletics has potential. We think with more money coming into a bigger conference that they could really grow. So uh, Tulane could be a potential fit for the ACC. And actually, as I'm talking about them, maybe I should have even had them up higher on this list. At number five, we have East Carolina. Now, unlike Tulane, East Carolina is obviously a very good geographic fit within the ACC, probably too much so. Um, the ACC is arguably already oversaturated with North Carolina schools. However, if any of those schools from North Carolina were to leave, it would make sense for the ACC to add East Carolina and really keep a stronghold on North Carolina, which has kind of been the heart of the conference. ECU, while down as of late, has shown that it can put together quality football teams. Just ask Virginia Tech. So while they don't need any more schools in North Carolina, Um, as the conference is constituted like this, there are scenarios in which some of its other top programs leave the state, in which case ECU feels like it would have to be, uh, it would be a must get. At number four, we have Navy. Now, Navy would be an excellent get for the ACC. Not only does it get them back into Maryland, but it gives them a school with a national brand that actually drives TV viewership. They're great academically, and as long as you can stand watching the triple option, <clears throat> Georgia Tech, then they usually can put together passable teams on the football field. So while Navy seems like a no-brainer, we put them this low on the list because the military academies have not wanted to commit to doing what it takes to play at a P5 level because it conflicts with their missions. And so I'm not sure Navy would actually want to go through with this. Also, I think the best bet would be to get them as a football only, which I think the ACC would, at least they should, um, should definitely do if Navy would consider doing it. But I think it's a long shot, and so that's why they're this low. At number three, we have South Florida. Now, they in no way, shape, or form replace Florida State, but they do help the ACC get another school and strengthen their foothold within the key market and recruiting hotbed that is the state of Florida. So they certainly don't want to leave the state and they want to have a presence there. And if you remember back before all this hubbub with the Pac-12, everyone was talking about South Florida as one of the first four group of five schools out. And if the Big uh, Big 12 were to expand again, they would be one of the schools considered. They're also looking to build a new football stadium. So it looks like while their athletics has been down, They've been doing a lot to try to get 
power five ready. So I think that they would be a good fit within the ACC. And number two, we have another one of those top G5 schools considered for Big 12 expansion in Memphis. And they're also working hard to get P5 ready, make updates to the Liberty Bowl, and they have a great basketball brand. Their football has done uh, very well as of late, and they are they are a good fit geographically. For the most part, Tennessee borders existing ACC school states, uh, even though Memphis is in that far southwest corner. But I would say that that is an advantage, much like Tulane. It would help expand the footprint and kind of get into that deep south area for uh, recruiting purposes. So I think Memphis brings a lot to the table. Now, our number one team, unlike Memphis, is actually on the Atlantic coast, and it should be no surprise to anybody. It is, you guessed it, UConn. Now, UConn obviously has a very strong brand in men's and women's basketball, obviously coming off the men's national championship. And remember, when they were in the Big East, well, when the Big East had football and was considered a power six, UConn actually won and went to BCS bowl game. So they have that infrastructure, they have that potential, and they actually had quite the turnaround last year with their football program. So there is some potential there. It gives you um, a, another foothold up in kind of that adjacent to New York market. Uh, I think it's a, a fit uh, culturally, geographically. They're obviously being uh, considered by the Big 12 for potential expansion. I really just don't see any downside that if the ACC had to turn to the group of five to expand, to, to stay together, that UConn just seems like a slam dunk. So that's our list. Let us know what you think of it. And if you were the ACC and had to add group of five schools to stay together, which schools would you add? Let us know your top 10 list in the comments below. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you next time.